Since its launch, NASA's James Webb Space Telescope has produced the most detailed and crisp infrared pictures of the distant universe. When viewing the youngest galaxies in this field, we look back with a billion years of the Big Bang. The expansion of the cosmos expanded light to infrared wavelengths, which Webb was built to study. Webb's NIR cam has brought distant galaxies into sharp focus, revealing previously unseen phenomena like star clusters and hazy regions. And this is only the start. Researchers will use Webb to take longer exposures, exposing more of our enormous cosmos. Recent images by the JWST show that the world-class telescope has just detected a 200 million year old structure. We'll be telling you all about it, so stay tuned. The JWST's first deep field picture has revealed a stunning array of galaxies. The location is dubbed the Sparkler Galaxy because of the tiny objects around it that appear as small sparkling yellow-red flecks. The Sparkler is a tiny galaxy that existed 9 billion years ago in the infant cosmos. It contained just one hundredth the mass of the Milky Way in stars, yet it will expand to reach the size of our galaxy over millennia. This young galaxy allows scientists to investigate a development spurt akin to what our universe may have gone through. The galaxy is famous for its strange, stretched look. Still, the surrounding objects that inspired the term are significant, since they may be the most distant globular clusters of stars scientists have observed. The sparkler, discovered in one of the first JWST photos published, is twisted into a stick form by gravitational lensing from a foreground galaxy cluster. The galaxy is surrounded by gold-tinged star clusters, thus its namesake. Five of the two dozen objects, termed sparkles, are most likely globular clusters, dense collections of old stars. The picture contains populations of some of the universe's oldest galaxies shining like gems across the immense span of space and time. Looking further into the image, a Canadian study team uncovered the most distant globular clusters seen yet, which may contain the universe's early and oldest stars. Webb was designed expressly for the job of locating them. Webb was built to find the first stars and galaxies to help us develop a clear understanding of the origins and complexity in the universe, such as the chemical elements and the building blocks of life, says Lamia Mola. Dunlap Fellow at the University of Toronto. The researchers concentrated on the sparkler galaxy, distinguished by the little yellow-red dot sparkles of star clusters surrounding it. These clusters are often exceedingly stable and survive billions of years due to their dense packing. The Canucks team discovered the globular clusters owing to a lack of oxygen lines in the NIRISS data. The presence of oxygen is critical. If identified, it would imply that the clusters were considerably younger and actively forming stars. JWST's exceptional resolution and sensitivity, together with a lucky natural amplification caused by gravitational lensing by a foreground galaxy, permitted these sparkles to be spotted for the first time, something Hubble's sensors could never have done. Scientists may better predict or comprehend the physical features of clusters by using multi-wavelength observations of the clusters. For such distant and ancient globular clusters, this is a view into the dressing room of the very early cosmos. These newly identified clusters were formed close to the initial time it was even possible to form stars, Moller explains, because the sparkler galaxy is much farther away than our own Milky Way. Determining the ages of its globular clusters is easier. We were looking at the sparkler 9 billion years ago when the cosmos was just 4.5 billion years old. Duncan Forbes of Swinburne University Australia and Aaron Romanofsky of San Jose State University and University of California Santa Cruz are now comparing the sparkler star clusters to those orbiting galaxies closer to home, namely our own, to comprehend the galaxy's past better. The Milky Way is home to around 150 known globular clusters, most of which orbit well outside its spiral disk of stars. Some of these globulars most likely formed early on. However, their origins are unknown. They must have been incorporated into our infant galaxy as it formed. Other globulars joined as the Milky Way devoured other galaxies and their accountaments. The globulars around the Milky Way's most enormous satellite galaxy, the large Magellanic Cloud, constitute a second set of reference points. The LMC is around the same size as the sparkler was 9 billion years ago. If the LMC is absorbed after repeat passages, its globulars will eventually join the Milky Way's collection. The dwarf galaxy Gaia Enceladus serves as a last point of comparison. It no longer exists. Gravity in the Milky Way ripped it to bits 9 billion years ago, 
precisely when we observed the sparkler. Even though the galaxy was destroyed, its globulars survived to join our galaxy's stellar halo. Other astronomers have determined which ones belonged to the Gaia Enceladus dwarf. Astronomers have used age and composition data to undertake archaeology in our galaxy, determining the Milky Way's merger history. However, such analysis is complicated enough when we have reams of data on the Milky Way from various sky surveys. Measurements grow increasingly unreliable for faraway galaxies in the distant cosmos. Forbes and Romanovsky compared the old sparks to hundreds of globular clusters in the Milky Way and the LMC. They discover that the globular sparks are similar to the metal-rich globulars that circle our galaxy and presumably form with it. Two of the longer, metal-poor flashes look identical to the globulars near the LMC and Gaia Enceladus. Forbes and Romanovsky suggest that these two objects are similarly globular clusters except that they are recently created and belong to a dwarf galaxy collapsing into the sparkler. We appear to be witnessing firsthand the assembly of this galaxy as it builds up its mass, in the form of a dwarf galaxy and several globular clusters," Forbes added. Another research conducted by Adelaide Kleyersons of Stockholm University looked at the same light from the possible globular clusters around the sparkler and discovered that they are metal-poor rather than metal-rich. She and her colleagues are currently attempting to resolve the measurement discrepancies. Forbes and Romanovsky admit in their analysis that the ages and metallicities of these clusters deserves further study. Using the JWST, astronomers have identified four of the most distant galaxies ever spotted, around 13 billion light-years from Earth. Scientists are witnessing what galaxies looked like just 300 to 500 million years after the Big Bang, in the infancy of our now approximately 14 billion year old universe. The frontier is moving almost every month, said Peter van Dockham, an astronomy professor at Yale University who wasn't involved in the study. Only 300 million years of unexplored universe history remain between these galaxies and the Big Bang, van Dockham stated. However, the four recently found galaxies are distinct in that scientists have established that they are ancient galaxies and not some other celestial entity or nearby galaxy masquerading as a distant one. Astronomers often use color to quantify red shift. The characteristic represents distance as light waves stretch and get redder as they fly across the cosmos. However, this technique is a riskier bet when exploring completely new frontiers, such as those being studied with JWST. In what Van Dockham calls a technical tour de force, the authors of the new study employed comprehensive measurements of the galaxy's spectra, or the spectrum of light they produce at various frequencies to check the accuracy of the red shifts. These four galaxies occur during the age of reionization, when scientists believe the first stars were formed. After confirming the ages of the galaxies, the researchers measured their stars. They discovered they were relatively tiny, at least in comparison to our Milky Way. However, the galaxies were also producing stars at a rapid rate, which was surprising so early in the universe, according to study co-author Stéphane Charlotte, a researcher at the Astrophysics Institute of Paris. Researchers believe the galaxies don't seem to contain any incredibly complicated components, suggesting that their stars haven't yet had time to form heavier elements and are instead composed of the initial hydrogen and helium atoms from the early cosmos. As Webb looks deeper into space, we can expect to learn more about the origins of our universe and eventually ourselves. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If yes, we're sure you would like this next video here. Thanks for watching.